Hi there. This is a tutorial on using the 3 times OSC in FL Studio. I'm going to cover the basics on how to create your own sounds with it. The OSC in 3 times OSC is short for oscillator. This means that the 3 times OSC is a synth that implements 3 oscillators to create its sounds. Ok, let's boot it up. You go to the channels menu in the top left of FL Studio. Go to add one. And then the list, pick 3 times OSC. Here it is here. In this main menu of the 3 times OSC, we can see the 3 oscillators represented in their own areas. OSC 1, 2 and 3. For each one of them we can see separate controls for volume, panning, tuning and what type of wave each oscillator is producing. Also we have stereo phase offset and stereo detune functions. These basically add a sort of chorusy effect to the sound. You might notice that OSC1 doesn't have a volume control. That's basically because OSC1 is basically always on. Ok, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the sounds of the different waves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take down the volume of OSC2 and 3. So we're just going to hear the oscillator number 1. Right now, the sine wave is selected, the one on the left. This produces a quite a pure sound, like this. Now you can pick from a number of these other ones, such as the triangle wave, the square, the sawtooth, the rounded sawtooth, and noise. So those are the sounds you basically have to play with, and you can use combinations of those sounds to create your own sounds with 3 times OSC. So what happens when we mix two oscillators together? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the volume of oscillator 2 up, like this. Now you'll notice that the coarse tuning knob here is set already to minus 12 semitones. That means that when I play a note, oscillator 2 is going to be playing a note 12 semitones or an octave below oscillator 1. It'll sound like this. Here's it without oscillator 2. Here's with oscillator 2. Let's turn oscillator 3 on. Oscillator 3 is set to 24 semitones below oscillator 1, which means it'll be two octaves below. Let's hear it. See how it's a richer sound? Now this is just three sine waves mixing together. Let's try mixing it up a bit. Let's make oscillator 1 a triangle. Let's make this one a square. Keep that one as a sine. Let's see how it sounds. See, we already have a pretty synthy sounding sound. You can try experimenting with these controls now to create your own sounds. When creating a sound, especially for a particular piece of music, it's important to think about the function of the sound. Are you after a short stabby sound, or a longer more drawn out sound? We can control this in the 3 times OSC using envelopes. I'm going to go to the instrument properties under the INS tab in the 3 times OSC. The most important envelope, which I will show you today, is the volume envelope under the volume tab. Here we can see a visual representation of the sound. From when we initiate the sound, by for example hitting a key on the keyboard, and then what happens when we release the key. In a nutshell, the envelope controls how the sound behaves over time. In its basic form, it is an emulation of how a plucked or hit string's volume changes over time. Now let's take a look at these knobs here. The first one, pre-delay time, which is represented on this graph here as this dot here, it's not terribly useful for most sounds. Basically, it affects how long it takes for the sound to initiate after pressing a key. So let's skip past this one. Let's look at this one here, the attack time, represented by this dot here. This affects how long it takes for the sound to reach its full volume. When set to a low setting, the sound instantly cuts in, like this. But when set to a higher setting, the sound slowly creeps in, like this.
next parameter, the hold time, represents how long the sound stays at its highest volume after the attack stage. The hold time is represented by this dot here. After this stage, there's the decay stage. The decay time knob will affect how long it takes for the sound's volume to decrease after the hold stage. In real world terms, when you think of say a guitar for example, when you pluck a string there's an initial attack that's quite loud, but then shortly afterwards the sound in volume decreases and then is sustained for a while at a lower level. This level of sustain can be controlled by this sustain level knob here. Now after I take a finger off the key on a keyboard after I've played a sound, uh, the, the release time knob will affect whether the sound stops short or it takes a while to release. Let me give you a couple of examples of how different release times can affect your sound. First I'll set the release time to a very small amount. Notice how the sound stops short. Let's set the release to a much longer. Notice how the sound took quite a while to die away. To add automated dynamics to a sound, LFOs can be used. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. Now the oscillators you hear creating the pitch sounds from the 3 times OSC are usually operating at frequencies of hundreds to thousands of hertz. LFOs, on the other hand, commonly operate at much lower frequencies and are used to modulate different aspects of a sound as it is being played. We can use LFOs to create such effects as tremolo and vibrato, just to name a couple. I'm going to go about adding vibrato to my sound. So first I'm going to go to the Pitch tab. Now, under the Envelope controls, we have the LFO controls. Now the first thing I need to do to add vibrato to my sound is edit the Amount knob. This affects how much the LFO is going to modulate the pitch of my sound. Let me put the amount up to a very high setting and let me play your sound. You can see that's a very wide vibrato. To get a usable vibrato that might emulate a, a player playing some sort of instrument, I'm going to put the amount to a very low setting. Now, zero is indicated by the knob being in the middle, so I'm going to put it just to the right, just a tiny bit. Let's try this. You can hear the vibrato there. You can change the speed of the vibrato with this knob here, making it a slow vibrato like this. Or a fast vibrato like this. You can see how that affects it. Now, the pre-delay time and the attack time work just like with the envelope section. The pre-delay time basically affects how long it takes for the vibrato to come into action. So say, if I put it up a bit, let's hear this. You can hear how the vibrato didn't come into action until a number of seconds after I pressed the key. The attack time basically affects how strongly the vibrato comes in at the start. To add a tremolo effect, I would use an LFO to modulate the volume of the wave. Also I recommend experimenting with different types of LFOs such as triangle waves or square waves. These add different effects. Anyway, thanks for watching my part 1 video on the 3 times OSC for FL Studio. In the next video I will explain how to use filters and the arpeggiator. Thank you.